You know, I, I got to apologize to you guys. I, I did a disservice, uh, not meaningfully, but um, we have uh, Dr. O and Joseph Spurgeon and Edward here. Um, he, uh, he heard from the Lord and came um, in obedience and they held a, an event here. And um, um, I, I should have got every single one of you here, <laughs> honestly. Um, and God willing, maybe uh, sometime down the road, uh, we can do that. I just want to let you guys know that uh, I, I absolutely meant it when I said that this is, you can know that this is a testament that uh, God is with us, God is for us, and um, he's so faithful, you guys, because to have the level of um, knowledge and wisdom and understanding and to be here released in this region and not only just in this region, but man, in this place, in this house, it's um, it's incredible. And many of you guys uh, may not have heard of uh, Dr. O, as I mentioned earlier, or Joseph. Joseph, you were here right before COVID, literally right before COVID. Um, but you're gonna have a chance to sit under his teaching. And so, um, man, I just, I just want to say I've, I've been here personally just helping out about the event and I'm changed. <laughs> I am I know you will be too. So Dr. O, can you please come on up? Can we give can you guys come on, let's stand up. Let's honor this man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Hallelujah. 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 Do I have... Let me be seated, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. You can say hallelujah, too. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing. Hallelujah is not a suggestion. It means you should praise the Lord. So you should praise the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God is... Oops. What did I do? Yes. Okay. Is that me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, it's good to be here. It's good to be at Gateway Center with you. Um, I don't know how you guys do it, but this is how I like to start. Can we all just stand up if you're filled with the Spirit and with the evidence of speaking in tongues? Just give it a few minutes. And if you're not, just talk whatever language and praise the Lord if you can. All right? If you, if you, can, if you cannot stand, just start talking to God. Make some... Put some sound into the atmosphere. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus, 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 the blood of Jesus. If you cannot hear your voice, you're not affecting the atmosphere. Hear your own voice. Let your body hear your own voice. Let's get the real doskoba shatara raba handeri aloko sotere lebra da baba sate kandara rama shandari andole brekendo roro si telereba reka sote kendele rebanda raba baba shandari sekre de rendele basuri andele baba bandele lebo si kerere si kriendo roro bosh kerere andolo mo sote keba. Jesus Christ is Lord. Ema setera baba 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 bala. 
Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. 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 Jesus Christ, Son of God. Hallelujah. Le masse taken the ribo boso tora baba na la na bate le ribusha. Rika soteri andola brada baka setele. Rende se mubar hande ya sebre rende le kasende remanda. Rika doze de vende ibra hande salahau. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Father, we engage the throne through the blood of Jesus. We engage you through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. By the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. E coso te ma de ma sete le andora habadera re coso te rima baba handele de bosca de ria we come under the blood ha re kama sete le we plead the blood we engage the blood of Jesus Father this morning oh la la baba ye ke se de Lord Jesus we are here because of your blood ha re baba ba talabaria and this morning Father let the voice of the blood resound e coso te le ba speak blood of Jesus speak blood of Jesus for you are the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel than the blood of bulls and goats and birds blood of Jesus speak speak mm. You feel that? The blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. Lord of Lord, King of Kings. Atagivole Olam Adonai. Barukata Adonai Loreno. Blessed are you. Glory be to you. Wow. What an incredible presence. What a, what a great worship. Amen. Come on. Let's do what the open apostles used to do. Let's clap for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Woo. You may be seated. It's good to be in the house of God with the people of God. I see that you guys are not COVID lazy. You are actually in church. God is a good God. I thank God for your pastor and his wife. I saw, I saw them. Was it last year? I saw them last year in uh, Sacra in Reading. Yeah. So I was. Uh, I was like, I know that girl that's playing the piano. <laughs> Who is she? Then I realize it's your wife. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. It's good to see you guys. I've been here for three days, just being obedient to the Lord. We're here. I came here with uh, my son, Edward, and uh, I don't know what to call him. It's both my son, my student, my friend, uh, Joseph Sturgeon. Uh, and uh, his lovely wife permits him to be here with us. Edward is our technique but he's a technician and a technology person for what we do around the world to travel with him. He's, um, Edward is a musician and he's an actor. He's been in a couple of movies. Probably saw him, but you didn't know it was him because you know, he dresses funny when he's in movies. He's, he's a great brother. Uh, he's a uh, Originally from Oakland, California, he's down there with us, helping us. You see the website looking good, it's him. Uh, Joseph is a great man of God in his own standing, around the world teaching and preaching the gospel. I'm humbled that people like him decided they want to come hear me. I'm just a Sunday school teacher. 
Now we're going to have some Sunday school this morning. Oh, relax. You guys can't get serious on me. I watched you worship, so don't even try. <laughs> yeah, you start trying to acting like you're serious people. I saw you. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> uh, it is awesome to be in the house of God. Again, Pastor Son, thank you. And all the people who were here during the conference helping us. We, we didn't come here for crowd. We came here because I came here because the Lord said, go back to the Northwest. I didn't even realize there was an, uh, a base here. Yeah, I didn't know all of that stuff. I just lazy. Um, and I also forgot that my kids do have a house in Shelton. I was like, it, until I got here, I was in a hotel and I called my son, my son-in-law, and my daughter-in-law. Why are you in a hotel? I'm in a hotel. Dad, we have an empty house. Why don't you just go stay over there? It's a blessing. So, but I just obeyed the Lord and I came out here. I was telling you, talk to you about Joseph. Joseph is an incredible man of God, an incredible businessman. Um, I love traveling with him. We were in Dubai for three months last, not last year, two years ago. And uh, doing some crazy stuff. <laughs> we, we got doing so many spiritual stuff that one of the pastors, great pastor, Mr. Switch is an incredible man of God. Church of over, we just have a church of over 12,000 in Dubai before the, the, um, the COVID stuff. And the night I was doing my spiritual work, I decided now I'm going to just shake things up in Dubai. And you know, in, among Islamic countries, you're not allowed to deal in spirits. Only the leaders are allowed. So you can't deal with genie, you can deal with angels, you can deal with all of that stuff. Because they don't, they, don't, they don't want the people to have that kind of spiritual access and power. So we, we, we <laughs> I finished, because he knows, he he's, comes to my house at least four or five times a year. Because uh, he's one of my top students. So we <laughs> did everything we did that night. That night. All of Dubai was in a mess. And I got these pastors calling me. We knew what was happening. The you know, pastor goes, what are all these witches doing flying around the city? We had dealt with them. What are they doing here? I said, you didn't deal with them. They just, you just allowed them to camouflage themselves. And this is what Christians do. They cause demonic and satanic camouflage and they think they have a victory. So we had, a, we had fun because it just it shifted everything in the atmosphere. Because, you know, these things will hide from believers. Yeah, so we, we had so much fun that Best of it, Best of Witch, Pastor Best of Witch, came over and said, I want to know what you were doing yesterday night. Like, I was not doing anything. It's not me. I, I was I was coolio that morning. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. But we had a, we had we had fun. We do spiritual stuff around the world, and God helps us. We've been all kinds of places, and uh, watch God do stuff. So when God said, "Come here," I was here about five years ago, and I decided I wasn't coming back. And there's some people in the room who know because I just like, nah, this mystic movement in in Northwest. Nah, it's not it's not Jesus' cup of tea, so I'm not coming back. So, but the Lord, I just finished the school. I, mean, I just finished teaching about 10 sessions last weekend, and God said, God Sarah said, You were going to Northwest. I said, I don't have a place to go. You know how you, you, know how you make excuse for God, right? I really don't have a place to go. I don't have a, there's no place to go. But the people I know, you know, like Steve Hampton, them, they are not, they don't have anything going in terms of the ministry and everything. So Lord, I, you know, I can't, I can't really go to the Northwest. And the Lord reminded me that I had met Song. Again, said, call Song. Yeah. 
I'm going to let, let Monique, my assistant, talk the song. I was just hoping he's going to say, now we're so busy. Uh, that weekend, there's nothing going on. There's a lot of stuff going on in church. And I say, Lord, you see, told you. I know you're not like that at all with God. I'm the only one that does that, right? So, so I'm like, you know, so I, they call him and he goes, yeah, we can do it this weekend, but we can do it this weekend. Said, okay. I'm going to come. And then it started. I'm, I'm, I'm going to preach to you, don't worry. I'm trying to tell you this stuff so you know we didn't just come here. I didn't come here to preach to you. I came here for something else. You know, preachers, pastors are funny. They'll give you work when you want to rest. So, so the, the week, the, the, this week, this week, we looked at the registration for the conference. We only had four people. I said, Lord, you see? I really don't need to be going up to the Northwest. And the Lord goes, really, son? Really? You're going to pull that on me? I just said, okay. So I called Eddie. I, said, I told my wife, I'm going to cancel this conference. I said, Lord, there's not even up to 20-something people there, just four people not going. By Tuesday, there were 20-something people. By Tuesday evening, there were 30-some people. Online, people from all over the world registering for the conference. God says, you're going to go. Bought the ticket, bought the plane, and here I am. And it's been something in the atmosphere. Not really, you know, what we saw, what we saw yesterday happen. God is good. It, it, it's, it's always good to listen to the Lord. <laughs> saves you a lot of trouble. Uh, you know, it, it, you can never win an argument with God. You just wait. So I like I've been I've been doing this for fifty something years. I've been in ministry for fifty three years this year. How old am I now? Sixty five. So I've been doing this since I was eight years old. So I'm, I'm not looking for places to preach. I always laugh at Christians when you come to their church. They act like somehow they can hold you from preaching. Not going to listen to him. They just laugh. Being in worse, being in places that. If I told you, you would be shocked. I preached in Kuwait, preached in places in the world that if, you, if I told you, you'd say, how did you get out? But the thing is, we all have to learn this lesson. Everyone. There's something in us always saying, ah, no, nah, Lord, I can't do that. Yet immediately we leave our prayer, immediately we leave talking to God or God leaves talking to us. We go into prayer and we go, Lord, anything you ask me, I will do. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go anywhere until God says go somewhere. <laughs> it's so easy. Eh? And in prayer, especially when God's not talking back. And God I give my everything to you. Send me anywhere you want. Okay, I want you to go to that neighborhood. No, Lord, can't do that. I meant everywhere but there. Anyone you bring into my life, I will, I will preach the gospel to them. I will love them. Then God brings an honorary, cantankerous person into your life. So you see, this is the thing about God. He takes you by your word. But that's what makes God awesome. Is that when we tell God something, God believes us. <laughs> so be careful what you say to the Lord because he believes you. Because he's going to come for it. Lord, I want to speak to unbelievers. Really? I believe you. Lord, I want to show people who cannot be loved the love of God. I believe you. See all those angry people in the world? I want to show them the love of God. 
I believe you. I want to be the one that changes all those crazy people. My daughter, I believe you. Now here they are. Can you be careful what you are saying to God? Because he takes you seriously. I had to learn. I learned that many years ago. But I learned that God believes me when I tell him I'm going to do something for him. But until I learned that lesson, I was always in trouble because I was always saying something I didn't understand. And I wasn't really convinced that I was going to do. I, 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 so I told you I've been doing this. I've done this. I've preached in nations. I've preached in the midst of Islamic people killing people. And God has said, go in there and preach the gospel. Drove into Joss, Nigeria, when they were killing Christians. God said, go. I went. So, 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 you know, when you tell God that you're going to do something, it may look like nobody's listening to you, but God always, what do they call it? He comes to collect. <laughs> God always comes to collect because he believes in you and he trusts you. Do you realize how much God trusts you? Maybe you don't know that God trusts you. Maybe you think the trust is just from you. Oh, I love that sound. I'm a grandpa, so I'm like, oh. ah, yes, 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 yes. You know, maybe you think that the trust is only one way. That's why you get an attitude with God. But if, if God treated you the same way you treat him because supposedly he didn't meet what you thought he promised you. How's the house life going to be for you? When I learned that the amount of trust God has for me is so huge. I started walking in a specific way with God. And started considering what I say in front of God. Because he believes me. I mean, that's a very simple thing. But it's one of the most powerful lessons every believer has to learn. God listens to me. God trusts me. God believes in my word. And that's based on his love. See, we're we the ones that say, I love you, but I don't trust you. That's a, such, such demarcation. Doesn't occur to God. In spite of all the, your craziness, or, oh no, you're not crazy, but you know, you know what I mean. God still says, I love you, and I trust you. Doesn't mean God doesn't know you're going to fail, but He trusts you. So that trust is so deep that God is willing to submit Himself as an instrument for you to do what you need to do. Oh, I wish I had a church in here. <laughs> I'm more, as I said, I'm not just a simple Sunday school teacher. But, but, but just think about it. God loves you. God trusts you. And God is willing to submit God's self to you and say, now you take me to do whatever you need to do. I need it to sink into you. In everything I just said, God makes himself vulnerable to you. When you learn that about God, then you won't have some of the attitude you have with him.
the vulnerability of the divine even extends to your weakness. So you, you mess up and God comes in the midst of the mess. Can I take it? Would you give it to me? Would you give it to me? And some of us are so, can I, am I free in this church? Please, let me just church the word I use in, my, in our church. Some of us are crazy donkeys. You can fill in the blank there for yourself. That when God comes to take it, we're like, no, no, no. This is so bad. I don't want you to see it. Don't take it. I want to keep it for a while because I love my guilt. Jesus, don't touch it. This is what's making everyone like me. <laughs> oh, bad preacher. <laughs> But the, 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 the amazing thing about God is this divine vulnerability, this willingness on his part to be an instrument in your hand. You talk a lot about you being an instrument in the hand of God. <laughs> you, you're no instrument, you're just a mess. <laughs> It's actually the other way around. It's the God of the universe who decides it's going to be an instrument in your hand, trusting you to use that instrument right. Oh, that messes you up, doesn't it? That wasn't really what I was going to preach this morning, but the Holy Ghost just said, it's my church. I'll do whatever I want. The Lord just said, I'll do what I want. Okay. So, but this is the reason, yeah, and the reason is that the way God sees you, the way God looks at you, is so beyond your comprehension. So let's just say a simple stuff like this. On Genesis chapter 1, we're very the beginning of the Bible, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. From verse 1 to verse 5. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what's, what's in that passage of scripture? What really is there? What, what is there? So I just told you God makes himself what? An instrument and releases himself as an instrument in your hand. In your voice. <laughs> okay, let me just step back. If the name of the king is the substance of the king, and the king gives you his name, they don't have to give you the kingdom. Because you have the kingdom with the name. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. So the thing I want to talk about is, is this is how incredible God is with us. Okay? All this stuff. And it begins in Genesis. And Jesus says it and says it and says it. It repeats itself about four times in scripture. So in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth and the earth was formless and void, right? And darkness covered the face of the deep, right? The face of whatever, you know, and the spirit of Elohim moved Marakafet, Marakafet over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. Love the Hebrew, Vahi Aor, Vahaya Aor. But what gets me there? is that the God of all creation, let's, let's do a little bit with the text. Most people think that Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 is about time. It's not about time, it's about location. It's a realistic term. Because in is not a time, 
is a real is a locate is a locative term. That's not what we're talking about today. It's free. Because in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. That means that the universe, the worlds, were not created in time, they were created in the location of divinity. That God is the location of creation, not chronological time. And you cannot measure something that God created in himself. Just messing up your little Sunday school theology. He says, in the beginning, are you saying, how do you say that? I mean, let me help you with just let the, let that spirit, those voices, let them go away. Just listen to me, because God Himself said, "I am the beginning and I am the end." So, in the beginning is not time; then in the beginning is God. You okay? So we're still talking about God and you. So this God. Who by, and by the way, if that's still giving you trouble, in him we live, move, and have our being. Same principle. All of Jesus' conversation with us is about us being in him, not us being in chronological movement. I try. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, but 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 you are but you are located there. I want to come back to my stuff, but that's a mistake we make because we locate ourselves mainly in time. We miss our eternal structure and nature and possibility. Do you even know who you are? Oh, you're going to say you do. No, you don't. And I'm going to be, I'm mess with you. I'm, I'm going to do what you're not supposed to do with Americans. You don't tell them they don't know who they are. I'll tell you now you don't know who you are. Talk about me when you live here. Have a barbecue, have a lunch, do something. I'm still going to say it. You don't know who you are. Most Christians don't know who they are. Most people, most children of God don't know who they are. That is not an, it's not an insult. It's a challenge. So, 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 so look at, let's, let's, let's get back to Genesis, right? Remember I just told you, I started with you, God loves you so much. He trusts you with all your messy self. You know, he believes in your word. He's willing to commit himself into your hands and say, here I am, take me, do whatever you want to do with me. But we can't just say that and leave it at that point. We gotta find why. What was this? So we're talking about the God that created the universe, right? So He created the world out of the Bible says out of nothing, or not the Bible. Theologians say out of nothing. Okay, uh, some Hebrew texts make it look like it's nothing. But, but in this context, God created the world in Himself. Here's the thing that gets me. Maybe it's just my village cranial limitation. God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth, heavens, plural, earth, one. And then the earth that God created, listen carefully, in himself, the Bible says that that earth was formless and void. God made it. Some people want to say Satan fell and all that stuff. That's why. I have my own theory about that. But let's just say what the Bible says. The earth was formless and void. I love the Hebrew word tohu bohu. The construct of tohu bohu. And I got some people in who don't know Hebrew who want to claim that they understand better than the Jewish people what Bohu Tohu is. But Bohu, anyway, we're not going to talk about that right now. Bohu Tohu is just a way of saying that it was unproductive, it had no life, it couldn't give up, give forth 
any fragrance of goodness, but it was in God. So how do, we don't know how the earth, we don't know how the earth became that way. But the Bible is very clear. And by the way, just just as a side, verse one to five of Genesis is the summary of which verse one is the summary of the whole Bible. Just in case you didn't know that, and it repeats itself in circular format. Then you go from verse 1 to 5, from chapter 1 to chapter 3, from chapter... And it just keeps expanding until the book of Revelation. So, so, so this God created this earth. I think it was a deliberate creation of God. I don't think the earth fell. I don't think the earth... I think God deliberately created the earth and placed it in a dimension of divinity where it had no light. That's what the Bible says. Darkness. Am I right? In your English version, it says formless and void. That's the Bible, right? Then he uses the word, I like the Hebrew word, it goes to their home. Their home is the word for an abyss. So what's God? And I'm going to do this. I'm not doing theology. I'm doing God. You know, God is a show and tell God. As I love God, you know, because he's like, oh, I'll show you. Then I'll tell you. <laughs> so, so he created this stuff in the Bible. He didn't go into detail to explain to us how it happened. He just said, this is what it is. The earth is formless. The earth is void. The earth is in a mess. And darkness is over the earth. That sounds like something you know. I could preach salvation from that passage. And then the next step is that the Holy Spirit of Elohim, not the spirit of Yahweh, the spirit of Elohim. And for those of you who are not Jewish, there's a distinction between the two. But this is the spirit of Elohim hovered and what? Over the face of the deep. I love the Hebrew term marakapet. That means that the holy God, the wholesome God, the marvelous God, that great and incredible God whom you call your father. Because we, 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 those of us who believe in Yeshua believe that the Holy Spirit is God, right? So let's, let's just do the Christian thing and say that God, the Holy Spirit, left the throne and came down to the abyss. You okay? Came down to the abyss and embraced the earth that was formless, that was void, that was in hell. I use the H word. <laughs> that was in hell and that could not produce anything. Filled with darkness. What gets me is God could have just commanded the earth. Hey, 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 I'm God. God could have sat in heaven and go, Earth, I'm tired of you being like that. Come on, get your act together. God could have driven by the Earth's neighborhood and wind his glass up of his car. I'm sorry, did I just say that? That's what some Christians do. God could have, hey Siri, stop it. It's just amazing how Siri interrupts. She's, she's such a rude girl. <laughs> you know, but you know this. The Holy Spirit of Elohim, the Spirit of, came down to meet the earth. And Marakapet, that is, embraced the earth in its dilapidation, its non productivity, its darkness, its formlessness, its living in hell. Gathered it. Maracapet is what a chicken does with its egg when it's trying to 
hatchet. It's an incubation. Hovers over it and transfer. So what's God doing? This stuff is messy. Because God, are you like God? Why don't you just say something? Just command the stuff. Yeah, God's showing us something. Pulls it. Who knows how long God held it? Because there was no time. I understand that in Genesis verse one, chapter one, verse one to five, there is no time. At least not the time the way you know it. Oh, by the way, that's the reason why when uh, the scientists put their measure the earth, it goes this it goes off the Richter scale, if you may. It goes millions of years because the earth existed before time, before it was bound by time. I don't know, what do I know? <laughs> so, so, but this is the what, what, what amazes me is God held the earth for, and I wouldn't do that, would you? You're a holy God. You're a righteous God. Everything about you is productive and awesome. And here's the earth in wherever it is. It goes down and holds it, embraces it. Doesn't berate it, doesn't say, Earth, you should know better. Doesn't speak even. We don't know how many, because it's eternity, it's, it's timeless. We don't say eternity, because it's what there's something in Judaism called timeless time. So it's timeless. So holds it. And then while holding it, I, and God just says, let there be light. But didn't say let there be light on the earth. He said let there be light. I said, God, what are you doing? And now we come to Jesus and we discover what? That Jesus said that God is light. But that's not what's surprising me. When God speaks light in Genesis chapter 1, he doesn't just speak light from himself. He speaks light from the future. I'll try it again. I, 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 I'm going to have a bit of fun right now. Yeah. So God speaks light out of himself. That's true. But God speaks light from the future. How do I know? Because when God said, let there be light, he uses the word for being. Not the word for function. Are you okay? I'm going to come back to talking to you about why you are so important to God. Okay? Because it's you I'm talking about. I'm just talking about the Father now so that you... You see what your father is doing. So he says, let there be light. And there was light. And the same word for was, unlike English, is the word for living, is the word for life, is the word for being. And by the way, that's how the English is supposed to work because the word is means existence. And was is just an existence that comes from the past that is present. Okay, try again. The grammatical structure is easiness. That's what we have a conversation in philosophy. What do you mean? What is ease? Is ease is, you know, that philosophers are crazy. So I talk about that. So, but ease is what? Existential reality. Okay? I mean, if something is, it means it is, it exists. So if it was, it means that there's the past that is manifested in the present, or it was. It was an ease, but it no longer exists. Let's leave that alone. That's, we're not in college, so let's be in church. Don't get tempted. Come on, Bonaya, don't get tempted. So, so God says, let there be light. Ye are all, by ye are all. I love the Hebrew stuff. So God releases this light. And I'm wondering, you release light in the darkness. But you're not talking to the earth. The earth is in darkness. And God then says, watch your text. When God said, let there be light, there was light. 
Then, and I'm almost done, because I've got five minutes, and we're going to preach and go, so I can go have my bulgogi, my Korean food. So, so when God does that, the light comes into existence, but the light is mixed with darkness. And then God does something else. God, this is the way the Hebrew works. God divides the darkness from the light. That's what your Bible says. But in the Hebrew, this is what it says. Okay? That means God separated. Bin is the word. Remember Usama bin Laden? Usama bin lying? Usama bin stealing? <laughs> you, you, you remember him, right? That bin means issue of. It's, it's a deformative of the word then which is an issue which which comes out of so watch this there's nobody there but the bible says god divided the issues of light and the issues of darkness and then god looked at it and god said and god saw that it was Why? Because the light is not just God. The light is a reflection of God. But the light that God is sending into the world is not just himself. Okay. Bible says, Jesus, my Lord, your Lord, your master, my master, says this, says, I am the light of the world. So we can argue that God was speaking Jesus into the atmosphere. Can we just try to get that together? But that's, that's easy because Jesus is God. Jesus is our Lord, Jesus is Savior. And Jesus turns around and says, oh, wait, forever, just before you forget, you are the light of the world. You know, the thing that gets me is Jesus never said, you are the little light of the world. Are you still with me? He never said that. I'm so amazed. We sing that song, this little light of mine. Jesus never sang that song. It's no, it's no, it's no twinkle, twinkle, little star. What I love about the Lord is that what did he do? He said, God is light. I am light. You are light. No distinction. <laughs> if you get that, then you can get why God trusts you so much. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Oh, come on. If I was in a black church, they would be shouting hallelujah. Hallelujah. There shouldn't be a black church and a white church, but I just like going to the African American churches. So, so, so the light in Genesis is about you. Okay. Uh, I, mean, I, could, I, could, I could stay there, but I'm going to stop. Because you know, when God said, let there be light, he was talking about you. So in other words, before the earth came out of darkness and out of the depth, God was holding it. God was speaking light in the atmosphere so that when he releases the earth, there will be someone in the atmosphere to keep the earth enlightened. Ah, can I get a witness in the house? Somebody shout hallelujah. So why wouldn't God trust you? Because you're an outflow of his being. The only person who can deal with the darkness in the world is you. The reason God places himself in vulnerable position with you 
is because you are that light that came out of him before the earth was brought out of hell. There is nothing in this world you cannot transform. Because Jesus said, God is light. I am light. You are light. <laughs> Thank you, baby. I love it. Children always preach back to me, even in the church. He says, okay, he can... Why does God trust you again? Because you're the one, he, before he made Adam, he had already spoken Adam into the atmosphere. You are that light. It's amazing. I asked, I asked a group with my students, I said, how do you chase away darkness? I know they open the coastal way. But in other ways, I bind your darkness and the darkness just be laughing at you. Really? Really? I'm not going anywhere. And then you hear Holy Ghost go, turn on the light. Just turn on the light. The, this world has you in it. Which means the light is in the world. Stop talking about the world is so filled with darkness. What, what the donkey <laughs> are you doing in the world? With all the light that is God that you are, and you are still saying that the world is filled with what? Darkness. Your neighborhood is filled with darkness and you are there? America is filled with darkness and you are here? I don't get it. So, because you are light, and that light is Jesus, and that light is God, God has no problem trusting you. Jesus has no problem leaving the expansion of the kingdom in your hand. Now you can either be who you're supposed to be or you can keep woosing out. <laughs> I did use the word. See, sometimes in church we get so antiseptic. You know, try to clean everything up. You know what you're going through. You know the words you use when you're in trouble. So don't be looking at me in church like, nah, I don't have yes, you do. <laughs> so get your donkey out of the seat, shine the light, and the darkness will flee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You don't pray for the light to come, you be the light. Right. You don't pray for God to do something, you do something. You take the God that has given himself to you. See, I, I just changed your language. You say you gave yourself to God. God said, no, you didn't give yourself to me. I gave myself to you. So you, you either use me rightly to do what you need to do, or you keep sitting around and sucking your thumb and crying that everybody else is taking over the world. Amen, lights. Okay, well, next time we're going to I am the light of the world. See, when I said a Christian, go, no, 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 I'm not the light of the world. Jesus is. Maybe Jesus was lying. He says, no, the same light that God is, that Jesus is, is the light that you are. It's not a different light. Let there be light. Stand up on your feet. Let's go. On. Come on, give Jesus a clap offering in the house. Hallelujah. 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 But it is that same light that you are that carries the healing for the nation. That same light that you are is when you spark it, it heals your body. 
When you realize that you got light and you know the light that you are, then the darkness, wherever it's coming from, begins to dissipate. Because it's written, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts in the face of Jesus Christ. That's the reason we become believers. That's the reason we believe in Jesus. It's so that we go from darkness to light. No, it's not that we go from a situation of darkness to a situation of light. It's that we go from being darkness to being light. That's actually how Paul writes it. Paul says, once you were darkness, but now you are light. Paul doesn't say, you, he says one, one place or two that you used to be in darkness. If you read the Greek, he doesn't really say you used to be in darkness. He says you were darkness. Now you are light. That's the reason God trusts you. Because you're the light he spoke. Oh, by the way, that's the reason Jesus became human. Because the light must be human. <laughs> do you know Jesus have you met him if you haven't this is your opportunity to do so because you know, the thing I discovered in, in the US I gave my life to Christ when I was a kid I came from Judaism my parents were Jews I still practice Judaism for a long time because I, I've never really left Judaism I know Yeshua I just like okay, I know met Yeshua he's my savior he's my lord I don't stop being a Jew and I'm not trying to make you into, into a Jew. Because <laughs> that's a pro problem with a lot of Jews. They want everybody to be a Jew. And pride legalism into the church. That's not what you don't, you don't need that. What you need is Yeshua. You need Yeshua to bring you into alignment into the light that you are. Yes, yes. The key for unlocking the light that human beings are, that God spoke from the beginning is Yeshua, it's Jesus. You become light. I'm telling you, and the power that you carry because of light. Uh, I, I quoted it for them this week, the old English proverb that uh, Sting sings. It says, at night, a candle is greater than the sun. The light you carry is greater than all the stars in the heavens. Why did you talk to God for a while? Pastor, come take your church. Okay. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Try like three days all day of man. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. O, Joseph, Edward, for being obedient. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace upon this place. Thank you, Lord, for trusting us. <laughs> Thank you for the revelation of light. Blessed be your name. Glory. Um, David, can we put up the QR code? Um, if he has books out there. Um, I'm going to get every single one, by the way. Um, and um, this is these are things we need to, it's really time for sons to mature, sons and daughters to mature. So um, I encourage you to, to learn and learn and learn and understand who we actually are. Amen? Um, if you want to give to Dr. O's ministry, this goes directly to him. So feel free to scan. We're going to keep it up. Um, the whole time. And Steve, if you can come up, um, I feel like uh, Steve came up and asked if he could do this, and I, and I felt like this was really important to do. So, thank you, brother. Well, I had the privilege um, five years ago to um, help bring Dr. O up to the Northwest here. It was not my meeting, but I was associated with that and helped to do the production end of it. And um, it's important for our yes to be yes. Um, now, I don't see Dr. O in the room here. Is Did he step out? Okay. 
Yeah, I just, I want to publicly repent for what happened at that meeting uh, on behalf of uh, the saints. So I'm wondering if we could, would he be willing to come back in? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if he was like just going to the book table. Um, so the, the, the phrase that keeps going over and over and over in my heart is, let your yes be yes. Now, I realize after a message like that, that some of you feel like you've been drinking from a fire hose and your cheeks are <laughs> sore from <laughs> getting so much. But that's really what it's like when you spend time with him. Uh, Joseph, you know that more than anybody because you've traveled so much with him. But um, I always find um, humor when a person um, is not used to that kind of teaching, which is really a rabbinic teaching where you ask a question and you get 25 questions as your answer. And yet that's the way Dr. O has taught me and, and so many others. So Dr. O, I just, I'm, I asked Sung if I could do this. I um, was so honored to have you come five years ago. And I am standing here today to publicly repent for those who don't have the wisdom or the courage or the heart to repent. Um, and I happen to know what occurred behind the scenes with all of that. And at the time that you were here, when this all occurred, I had just lost my company to fraud and um, embezzlement. And I lost $1.7 million um, that week that you were here. And it was a very um, difficult, painful time. But again, that phrase that I just used, let your yes be yes. And as light, <laughs> I want to repent on behalf of those that, that um, lied and failed you. And I know what the amount of the offering was. And so I'm going to use your QR code and I'm going to give that to you. It's been a long time coming because it's been five years, but I, I've just felt the Lord say, bring a restoration because we, we need your voice and we need you as the light that you are in the Northwest here. I remember talking with Bob Jones years ago when we were traveling and he said, um, I said, why don't you ever come to the Northwest? And he goes, it's hard ground. <laughs> and I said, you're one of the leading prophets of God in the whole world. What do you mean it's hard ground? And I didn't say shame on you, but that was the gist of what I was saying. It was like, it, like we're worth it. We got some cool people up there that, that deserve to have the ground broken up. So the scripture says, break up the fallow ground. Anyway, I left that with him. And a year later, they came up and broke through a number of things and it was it was good but i think what we have seen this morning is that the the resonance of not just your words but of the light that you bring we need that we need that so i want to invite you to um as members of the the church of god of jesus in the northwest if you feel so led to um so into that because they they paid for all of their expenses they paid for their hotel their food everything none of that was reimbursed and that's a shame and a tragedy um but then when you announce the amount of the offering publicly and then fail to give it to a man of god like that there, there's consequences for that I want to make sure those consequences don't land on the church. They can land on where they need to land. But I want I want to re, to right that wrong today because I love you. All right, saints. God bless you. What an awesome service. Thank you for being here. Uh, we do this together. Uh, it's not what it is when we're not together. It's not like this when we don't show up. So thank you for being here. We're honored. God bless you, and we will see you soon.